I'd like to uh, start today, welcome to Tuesday by the way, uh, to talk about switch machines. This is kind of an introduction to switch machines, which is uh, to say a brief history of, of how we got to the point where we are. The points where we are? Anyway, got to this point. Now, historically with model railroads, we would uh, throw the points manually using some sort of manual control. This is a ground throw, a miniature version of what is used on prototype railroads of a lever that can be thrown across and throw the points from one side to the other. And a lot of people today still prefer to have a manual throw. That's what we have at Garage Mahal. We're actually using a, a miniature switch stand on most of the switches inside the building. We have a ground throw in one place just simply for clearance that some of our locomotives like to clip the switch stand. So uh, in one place where we couldn't fit anything else, we're using a ground throw. But everywhere else inside the building, we're using a little miniature switch stand. And I just love the, the uh, look and feel of an actual switch stand. Now, back in the dark ages of the 1960s, when I had my very first HO scale railroad, this is what we predominantly used. It's the Atlas switch machine. If you purchased an Atlas switch, it came with a dummy version of these. You could throw the points, but it wasn't electric. And then you could run over to the hobby shop and buy the electric version of this and substitute that. And then that allowed you to throw your points from a, a remote location somewhere. All of the switch machines that were available back then were actually solenoids. They were a little electromagnet with a magnetic plunger inside. And so if you, uh, if you send polarity to this in one direction, the plunger will throw in one way. If you send the opposite polarity to it, the plunger will uh, head off in the other direction. So this allows you to control your switch machine just by simply reversing the polarity on the solenoid. And these things are very powerful. I mean, they really throw the magnet from one end to the other quite violently. So even if there's a little bit of resistance in the points, these will still, generally speaking, throw the switch. The downside is if you leave the current on for more than even just a few seconds, it will melt. Now, as a 14-year-old boy, easily frustrated and with a railroad that wasn't all that well built, if my points wouldn't throw, I'd get frustrated and keep punching the button and holding it in and going, come on, throw the throw the miserable switch, you stupid thing. And then I notice smoke rising over there. And if you looked at any of my switch machines back then, you'd notice that the covers on top of them were all melted. This is the controller that Atlas sold to run their switch machines. And you could uh, daisy chain these together. You hook DC power at one end. You could then put straps to the next one and the next one and the next one. And then you'll notice that there's three output terminals here, uh, the common and the left and the right and you'd run those over to your switch machine. Now the switch here isn't, uh, isn't always on. It's a, it's a momentary push button with a switch. So you would set the switch to the position that you wanted your points to align to, and then press in on the button, and then it would send power over to your solenoid, and only then. If you left it on all the time, of course, after a few seconds, it would just burn up. So it has to be momentary contact, and that's how they worked this out. You'd throw the switch in one direction or the other, and then press in on it, and then from out on the railroad, you'd hear a satisfying click, knowing that your switch machine just operated and threw the points in the other direction. Or again, if you're like I was back then, and you keep punching the button over and over and holding it in because your points aren't throwing, uh, it doesn't take long before the whole thing goes up in smoke. Now, interestingly, this isn't too far removed from the way prototype railroads uh, operated back then. This is a CTC control panel. Uh, this one's actually on someone's model railroad. Not very many places are these still being used on the prototype. But the functionality is kind of similar, that you set the switches here to the direction that you want the points to align. 
Moreover, this is going to change the signals uh, out on the track telling uh, the uh, locomotive engineer how the points are aligned and whether or not the track ahead of them is clear and they're authorized to be on it. And it's all set from this control panel. So the, uh, the operator here will set these switches into the alignment that they want for the points. And once they have uh, their, their uh, setup complete, only then do they press the button down here and then clack all across the railroad, relays fire and motors run. And you can actually hear these relays clicking and clacking up and down the railroad because somebody pressed this button. And that's uh, turning on lights and aligning points. Now, like I say, uh, all of this was controlled from a CTC control panel. And so uh, what a lot of people have chosen to do on their model railroads is build something that looks like uh, a CTC control panel, or they've actually uh, scrounged an actual CTC control panel, which uh, have been removed from the actual railroads. And so those things are out there and you can purchase them. Lee Nicholas in Corinne, Utah, with the Utah Colorado Western uh, Railroad in HO scale, he's created an amazing railroad in his basement that's all controlled from an actual CTC control system. One of the fun things he's done there, since it's all actually electronic now and it uses motors rather than, than solenoids to run the switches, it's all quiet when you push the button. It's just, in, you know, lights come on. There's no sound at all. So he's taken a sound system and programmed it to sound like relays firing. And so when you hit the button, you hear click, clack, 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 click as all these relays. It's, and, but it's just a sound system playing through speakers. At any rate, most people have given up on the solenoid systems. Our friend uh, Ralph Gochner, he installed solenoids back in the 60s. They're still working fine for him. So on his railroad, that's what he's still using. At any rate, let's fast forward to, uh, I think it was like the 1980s. And there was an article, I believe, in Model Railroader saying that you could acquire these sign motors. They were designed to use on display signs in stores where you wanted to have a little animated feature and uh, they ran on batteries and this company offered these and you could just buy them and use those to operate your points. This is how they were delivered. They just have a shaft sticking out. And so in order to operate your switch, the trick was to drill a hole through the end of the shaft so that you could mount uh, an arm on there and that arm would operate your points. This, of course, was not all that easy to do, uh, drill a hole through this steel shaft. And so very quickly, a, a clever company said, well, we'll just uh, drill those and sell them to people so you could buy these to use as switch motors. So they came all pre-drilled with the little brass arm and everything. And actually, they were quite simple to install and use. They were referred to as stall motors because there was no limit switch on them. Once you set them in a direction, the arm would swing around, hit the little retainer there that would stop it, and, and the motor would just sit there then at a stall, pulling current and trying to run. Didn't seem to damage the motor, didn't hurt anything, but all of your motors would be on all the time, trying to pull the points in some direction, and only when you reversed polarity to reverse the direction of the motor, the whole thing would swing around to the other side, hit the retainer there and stop again and stall and just sit there at a stall. When I built my large HO railroad, I started using these motors and uh, a lot of people refer to them as slow motion motors because instead of the solenoids slamming the points across there, they kind of slowly moved across the other side. And then uh, free market capitalism working the way it's supposed to work, a uh, company came along and said, let's just redesign that whole little sign motor into something that uh, works better and is easier to install. And they came up with the tortoise switch machine. It's the exact same thing, only different. Uh, and it is, it's very easy to install, very easy to use. And a lot of people have, have been using these. There's tons of them still in use out there. Mine are not still in use. I dismantled my HO Railroad back in the 90s, but being the pack rat that I am, I haven't thrown anything away. So I still have a, 
a box full of tortoise switch machines, thinking that I may just use them on the, the large-scale railroad or something like that. But I, I saved them all. So very simple to control these stall motors. You simply have a double pull, double throw switch that reverses the polarity to the motor. And then uh, one of the things that I like to do is you could take uh, one end of that switch, one end would go off your switch machine, the other end could go off to a two color LED. If you've ever messed with these, they light up red in one polarity, green in the other polarity, and interestingly yellow if you run AC through them. At any, at any rate, you'd put a uh, load resistor on there, and then whichever position you had the switch in, the LED would change color. And so you could have a, a little LED next to the switch so that it, it would tell you what position the points were in. What I did, too, is I cast up some little switch machine bezels, some switch lantern, rather, bezels, and mount those in the control panel so when you'd throw the switch and the light would change color, it actually looked like a little switch lantern changing colors. The tortoise switch machine also has a built-in double double pull, double throw switch that you can use to route power to a reversing loop or in this case to a, a powered frog. The, the only downside with these guys is that they're rather tall and once they're mounted in place and everything, they hang down quite far. So it depends on your bench work. But a lot of the people with the modular railroads have, have run into problems with these because uh, uh, their, their systems have to be portable. And if these guys are hanging down below the bench work, uh, they're out there in harm's way and they're likely to get smacked or snag on something when you're trying to move your modules around. And so there's actually a new generation of these slow motion, if you will, these motor controlled switch machines that are very thin. They, they hardly hang down at all. And even the wiring connections are off to the side. So uh, they're not going to uh, obstruct, uh, especially on a, on a modular railroad where the height of the machine is an issue. But that's, uh, that's next week's video. Well, hopefully you've liked this video. If so, please hit the like button. And if you're not a subscriber to the channel, please hit the upcoming subscribe button. Doesn't cost anything, doesn't hurt anything. Just click it and you will become a subscriber. And the easy way to do that is click the upcoming blue button. Zoink! Right there, the blue button. Well, we're not sure how you found this video on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. And Karen and I will see you here on Sunday. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.